Hi. This photograph, taken in a road cutting just outside Jerusalem in Israel, um, beautifully shows some of the different types of fold. What I want us to do today is to work on um, making sure that we can uh, both identify uh, different types of folds and also be able to make some crucial measurements uh, of those folds. We're working on page 13 in our theme 13 booklets. Okay, let's go. Before we get stuck into the um, key parts of today's lesson, something I want you to think about uh, for the end. And that's about the patterns that we can see on the ground surface that folds make. Another way of thinking about this that we'll, um, we'll come back to in theme 14 is what um, these folds would look like on a map. So on a, on a horizontal uh, flat surface uh, on the ground, which is what a map shows us, what would these faults that we can see here in cross-section actually look like? I'll let you think about that for a bit, but let's get stuck into the main part of the lesson. We're working on um, question eight. And question eight, I've given you two fairly simple block diagrams. Uh, this is fold one. Um, there's a series of questions I'd like to answer for each of these folds. Uh, so you need to identify the type of fold. I'd like you to do a bit of colouring in. And what I'd like you to make to make you what I would like to make sure that you do is that you use the same colours on both folds for the same beds. Okay, so for example, bed B on both folds, bed C, bed D need to be the same colour for both of your diagrams. Okay, it'll make it um, more obvious. If we think about the age of these beds, think about the law of superposition. Uh, bed A must be the oldest, bed D must be the youngest. So once we've coloured those in, uh, I'd like you to draw a line where the axis is. Remember, the axis is the middle of the fold, where the, the hinge is. Do that on the top surface and on the uh, cross-sectional uh, surface. On the top surface, then, can you draw some dip arrows? Now, remember, dip is the direction that the beds go down. So what would that look like on the top surface? Can you point in the direction that those beds would actually go down? Uh, and finally, then, uh, we need to measure the dip. You can see the dip here is uh, uh, annoyingly curved. So I'd like you to draw a tangent uh, to the uh, bedding plane. Best one's probably between B and C. Um, a measure with a protractor, the dip. So that's the angle from the horizontal going down. Okay, You've got a horizontal line there uh, you can use to help measure that. Okay. So for both of these folds, for fold one and fold two, can we do those jobs? And for the digging deeper, can we think about the pattern of beds that we're getting at the surface? Okay then, have a go at those questions now, see what you come up with. Okay then. Let's have a look at some of the answers. Let's look at fold one to start with. So fold one is an anti-form. It's an upfold. Uh, I mean, it almost looks like an A, um, the shape it makes. Uh, it makes it an anti-form. Uh, let's color in the beds. There we go. And I then ask you to draw in the axis. Now, the axis is the middle of the fold. It's where the bend occurs. So those are the, uh, that's the middle of that fold. Okay. Uh, then if we're drawing the dip arrows on the surface, 
They go like that. Notice that the dip arrows in an antiform are pointing away from each other. That's how we recognize a fold from the dip arrows. If they're pointing in different directions. And in an antiform, those arrows will point away from each other. That axis is oriented from east to west. We've got north on the left, south on the right, so the axis must be going east-west. This is an example uh, of an antiform. Uh, you, so, some of you may have seen this. This is actually uh, in the cliffs just by Saundersfoot in Pembrokeshire, a place called Ladies Well. Um, we can see there that we've got this upfold. This particular one uh, is quite uh, steep, or the dip of the beds is quite steep. Um, but it's a clear, uh, very distinctive upfold. Okay, if we draw a tangent to the line, it's going to look something like that. Now, I measured it. Uh, there's inevitably going to be variation here. I reckon that the dip of the beds at that tangent is about 40 degrees, roughly. If you think about fold two, fold two is different. Fold two is a sin form. It's a down fold. Uh, you can think of it sinking, I suppose, as a way of remembering it. Let's colour in the beds again. If use the same colours as before. Again, if I draw the axis in, through the middle of the fold, there it goes. And if I put the dip arrows on, you'll see that, again, these arrows point in different directions. It's how we recognize a fold from dip arrows. Okay, We'll have the same bed folded in different directions. However, you can see in this one, and the thing that makes it distinctively a sin form, is that these two beds, or these two dip arrows, should I say, are pointing towards each other. So in an antiform, they point away from each other. In a sin form, they point towards each other. The key, key difference. The axis for this particular fold is oriented southeast to northwest. Okay, The axis is always right angles uh, to the dip, certainly GCSE. Um, the dip direction there also shows us the stress that makes these folds which again will be at right angles to the axis. If you look at what one of these looks like, slightly larger scale one there, um, distinctive downfold. These things should be fairly straightforward to recognize uh, in a side view, in a cross-sectional view, like we see in the photograph, like we see on the vertical side facing to us on the block diagram. As GCSE geologists, though, uh, and certainly when we get into theme 14, we'll need to be able to recognize these features uh, from the map surface, from the top surface only. Uh, again, if we have a look at the tangent, tangent goes in here, we can see the beds here are dipping more gently than the antiform. And I measured this tangent to be about 20 degrees, roughly. Okay, at the start of the lesson, I asked you to see if you could recognize the pattern that these folds make on the ground surface. We should be able to see this from your colored in block diagrams. Let me just put some axes uh, on this diagram. There we go. So the red axes are antiformal axes, the green ones are synformal axes. 
if we look at the color patterns we see, firstly, we can see that there's repeating patterns of beds. That tells us we have a fold. The same bed keeps reappearing in different places. If we look at the green bed here, okay, it keeps reappearing because of folding. Not only that, if you look at an antiform, in the middle of an antiform, we'll find the older bed. So if you look at these uh, top four beds in this sequence, we see a brown bed, then green, then yellow, then gray. So the brown bed is the older one, the gray bed is the youngest one. In an antiform, we get that oldest bed in the middle, and the beds get younger as we get further away from that axis. For a sin form, we see the grey bed in the middle, the youngest bed is in the middle, and the beds get older in the direction uh, as they get away from the axis. Okay. So, as we watch the sunset uh, down the highway coming out of Jerusalem here, we can see that these different types of folds can be recognized, not just from the cross-sectional view that we've been doing before, but also the top view, the map view of these folds. Crucial to that, though, is recognizing these pattern of dip arrows. We're going to come back to this and explore this in more detail uh, when we do uh, map work in theme 14. But if we can uh, get to grips with just how it works, and particularly relating the cross-sectional view to the map view, at this stage, maps will become easier for us. Anyway, we need to look at what happens where we get um, some folding and faulting combining, but that's for another lesson. I'll see you then.